Henry Township Trustees Board Meeting of November 6, 2023. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and start with the adoption of the minutes from October 2nd. Have you had a chance to read them, Don? I move the adoption of the October 2nd meeting. Um, I second. May we vote, please? I mean, is that what we do? Yes. yes. We do. <laughs> the Hollister, yes. Moyer, yes. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia, for getting that done. Um, that's awesome. Should we? I'd just like to acknowledge that uh, Chris Muscher is not with us. Oh, yes. I, I skipped that part. With roll us, call. Yeah. we have roll call. Two, um, two trustees today, Trustee Hollister and myself, Fire Chief Denny Powell, and Zoning Inspector Richard Zoff. Running with a light crew today. Um, I would entertain a motion for the payment of our bills for $87,902.08. Hmm. General fund, $8,267.96. Fire fund, $64,503.52. I'm guessing there were two payrolls during that time? Yeah, there was two, two payrolls and we had a couple of really big bills. So we had two payrolls during that time. Yeah. For two payrolls, that's good. Yeah. Um, EMS billing, $5,912.69. I'm actually really glad to hear that. Cemetery, $785.32. Road and Bridge, $8,432.59. All right, correspondence. I move oh, of course. Uh, that we pay payment of the bills. Thank you for being on it. Our bills will get paid. I second. Um, any further discussion? I'll call it Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. <laughs> pay the bills. Shall we'll be paid. Correspondence. This afternoon received an uh, email from Lindsay Workman of Vesper Energy re to request this be put on our um, agenda for December 4th meeting. Um, and the email had said to introduce the um, new project called Aviation. Um, you heard it here first. They are coming, or maybe you didn't. Um, they are coming. They are going to apply for another permit for a um, smaller footprint facility on the same site. Does that mean that they've given up on the original? No. <laughs> okay. They're just I think it's a contingent, but I don't know. That's what we'll find out on December fourth. Okay. Um, I don't know why I put the second thing, Don Hollister, Lee Sloan, he was just, you know, th saying thanks for joining the, you know. The, yeah. The cross appeal. Cross appeal. I thought I'd put that on there, but. All right. The second one, this next one, USDA, USDA. I wish Chris was here because I didn't receive this. I saw it laying in the correspondence. I didn't receive this one. A review of borrowers to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements, building, and vehicles and staff review. Um, I'll get with Chris because. He kind of uh, just briefly gave me a heads up about that and okay. what he kind of thought the expectations of it were going to be. It didn't, I don't think it's going to be a terrible deal. Okay. But I'm not clear about how often it's going to have to happen. He thought, we, we weren't clear if it was only a one time thing or if it was all the way through till the building is paid off. Okay. I mean, so. Because we have a USDA loan. loan for 34 more years or something. Um, yeah, exactly. Checking this. And they periodically audit us. Yeah, it's mostly to really look at just the overall building and how it's being utilized, ADA stuff and, and, and that. Um, and I'm not, there were some thing about apparatus, but I'm like, well, and, there, and vehicles to make sure the vehicles are being used for their intended purpose. Yeah, and yeah. then there was a poster we are to hang in the workplace concerning. We probably already do that. Diversity. Sure. What did you think it was concerning? Um, representation in the workforce or something? I think we have that, but okay. I'll definitely double check that before we have one. Okay. Um, next one is Kelly Langang Patron to Richard's off copy to copy to trustees inquiry about further paperwork regarding I don't 
what was I on regarding agritourism permit for 4,000 Kyle Road, inquiring about the permit for 4,083 Kyle Road, and then Richard's off to Kelly Patron, copy to trustees, additional documentation needed to report a new application required for 4083 Kyle Road. Nathan Lee, I also didn't receive this one. He said he's waiting for our participation in the climate change survey, but that must have just gone to Chris as well. Um, MVRPC is having a virtual public meeting, a review of the transportation projects being funded by sub-allocated federal funds, November 9th at 5 p.m. if anybody would like input. Keith Farber, Auditor of State, he had a memorandum, memorandum of agreement, you'll like this one, Don, for our subcontract with an independent public accountant for our audit services. YSDC sent us a timeline for community solar feasibility project. The OTA Winter Conference registration is now open for anybody who'd like to register. And we had the OTA Journal and I was hoping Dan would be here because Chrisana Anderson, maybe Richard knows something about this, wants to know, does the township require a special haul permit for trucking companies and do we wish to be added to their reference page for trucking companies and have us have our permit linked to theirs? And um, I don't believe we issued any permit. We don't ever heard of authority to, to ever. Yeah. Okay. It would only be on township roads. Right. And there's not many trucks that haul on township. Okay, I'll take care of that because she said if it's a no, please respond. So that's easy enough. Yeah, we, we certainly have nothing in place, and I don't think there's been any problems that we think we ought to put something in place. No, I've never heard of it. No, no, I'll do that. Okay. Um, Don, you wanted to, you talked to Scott Alsterholm, you said you got an email. I did not receive it. Maybe it was just to you. His request for trustee support of a speed limit reduction on Polecat Road. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, we, we'll, do you want to talk about that now? Um, yes, I, I actually I want to put that on the public agenda. Do you want to put that under new business or what? Um, it could go on public agenda or new business. I don't care. Well, now it's public agenda. Okay. Uh, actually, he sent me a text, but it's a follow-up to when he, he was here. He made yeah. the same request. Uh, yeah, well, we said we would do. And I will. I thought read the request. A motion that you were going to support that. Doesn't that sound for him? I don't think we need a motion, but uh, rather than my recalling what he said, I will read what he said. I think there's a situation where it's like he's specifically asking for his, uh, north of town on Polecat Road as you leave the village and then pass Ellis Pond. I was asking for a letter to County Engineer Stephanie Goff for a speed zone change on Polecat Road uh, to, to 35 miles per hour instead of 55 from where the Yellow Springs uh, village boundary is past the entrance to Ellis Pond and then that there be a reduced speed sign if you're coming from the north on Polecat Road as you approach Ellis Pond. Uh, my, in, my thought is we don't need a motion particularly, just okay. let's write well, the letter. I mean, assuming I, I, I support it. I have no idea what that's based on or why the, why the, um, I'd be happy to. I don't know why Steph Groff has her reasons of why that is that speed or. Well, currently. She is an, she no, is a transportation engineer, you know. Because we, because it's no longer in the village limit, it automatically goes to Pitts Pot, okay. unless there's some other prior. Uh, or we're, we're closing the barn door after the cows got out. Yeah. After well, one fellow was killed, yes. Well, if, yeah. Well, we've well, had other people killed well, on that. Well, I don't think. Well, the, the, all the more reason to give it a guess. I don't know that it will. 35 miles isn't going to stop some of them being 
killed if they're hit by a, a car, but it yeah. will slow reduce the reduce reaction time. But well, that's yeah. saying you figure your 55 mile hour speed limit increases right there, you know, immediately past the village limit. So you legally can go 55 miles an hour right past the bike path, right up past the pond and everything. Mm -hmm. So it, it yep. I mean, okay. Now we have more like transitions on a lot of the other entrances to the village. So um, I don't. I don't need it to be a motion. I just. I, I, there's an underlying assumption that we all supported it, and I. I was just. I mean, we out talked, of, we, more out of ignorance. Okay, we I, talked about it once before. Okay, um, that's that's great. Somebody just needs to contact Stephanie and say the township has no objections to reducing. The well, I think we should have a formal letter, and I would ask our chair to. Sign the letter, I'll write it. Okay, deal. Don will write letter. Marilyn will sign. Okay. okay. Madam Chair will sign, okay. Um, cool. Fire department report. Okay, uh, so since last meeting we had 30 EMS calls, seven fire related calls, uh, mutual aid requests for us. Uh, we requested mutual aid on 10 EMS calls, 7 of those were due to second calls, um, and then 4 of those were fire related, um, which were primarily uh, needing additional personnel or additional trucks. Uh, Medic 82 is out of service for the oil leak repair, hopefully tomorrow I'll have a little more information on that. They're still chasing down exactly where the leak is, but um, we'll see hopefully tomorrow. Um, I sent you guys an, uh, an email on apparatus issues, um, a change in that now, hold your fingers crossed, Medic 81 is in service. Um, so I don't want to talk anymore about that because sometimes <laughs> you don't have faith. Um, uh, I gave verbal approval just from some from fire protection stuff for preliminary work on 221 Z Avenue, which is one of the iron, that would be where the old earthworks was. So that's one of the iron table holdings. Wait, 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 what? So I gave a verbal approval for some fire protection stuff. Um, what is like that? Where to put their fire, uh, fire department connections and-, and Remind, kind of remind me again, where is 221? Uh, it's where Earth Rose used to be. Yes, Earth yeah. Rose. Um, uh, Georgia has successfully passed and is now certified as a fire inspector. So per per policy, that gets her a dollar per an hour pay raise, and that's entered into UAN, so it'll go. Up, so that'll appear on her next check. Um, okay, Mavica voiceover IP3 or contract. Um, so I need approval to sign the Mavica voiceover IP. Um, it's, so it's a three-year contract, it's $3,340 for the entire, all the phones in the building. That's what provides all of our phone service and also covers, um, it's a renewal of the existing contract that we've had. So that covers anything like, as well as if we have damage to the hardware, like, you know, phone blows up or whatever, they replace the phone or any. Well, but Vic is more than phones. And, and internet. Phones and internet. Yeah. Um, so I need permission to renew this contract. Um, so that's a that fee is set for the next three years, um, which is honestly is a very reasonable price for what we get out of that. Um, so I'd be asking for a motion to approve that. I move approval of contract with MVECA uh, for our DOIP. Yes. Service. A second. Any further discussion? I have one question. Is this what we usually do as a three-year commitment to them? Uh, yes. Okay. Now this would be the first time we've done that, but that's their standard how they write, how they do the contract. It's Which the is standard, but it's the first time we're doing it. It's. I'm sorry. It's the second time we're doing it because we've been. We're we're almost through the three-year period in the building. Um, All right. Point. Hard to believe that. That is hard to believe. Yeah. Hearing no more discussion, maybe we vote. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Okay. Um, That's all I have. You asked me. 
Well, we might have to get Hollister up to speed a little bit. Um, I want to make a motion to appoint Denny Powell as the representative of Miami Township on the PSISN board and subcommittee of the county or of the. Uh, yeah, you could say of the county. P. P. S. P. S. I. S. N. P. S. I. S. N. And and I'm don't ask what that is. I'm supposed to remember what that stands for. So let me kind of give you the, the a really brief thing of what that is. So that is essentially all of the software and the administrative uh, portions of what runs all of our CAD software, dispatch software, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I went to the last uh, PSISN board meeting. Um, about two weeks ago and they asked for representatives from each jurisdiction now to come uh, and participate in the board meetings it doesn't give us an actual seat on the board because that is um, the way that is done is the people who are on the department agencies are on the east side of the county which is considered to be us um, new jasper uh, jamestown and cedarville uh, or, uh, Cedarville's fire chief is our voting member on that committee. Um, but the board wanted each jurisdiction to have someone who was able to be there and be represented. And, and uh, since it's all stuff that only deals with the fire department, um, that's kind of the rationale behind it. Well, thanks for doing that. That sounds like a really exciting meeting. <laughs> and so, and it's so, interesting. Yes. so this is overseeing software for what? Dispatch type stuff? Not dispatch stuff. Dispatch is, is over the city of Xenia, but this is... Um, so if you think of when our, our needs as a dispatch agency, you have the actual physical dispatch center, and then you have all the computer minutia that runs all of it. This deals with all the computer stuff. Just as a test, mm -hmm. what does PSISN stand for? Public Safety Information Sharing Network. And don't ask what the fire department calls it. <laughs> you can ask later. <laughs> um. Anything else for the fire department? Yep. Cemetery and Road Report. Dan, is Dan off now? Does anybody know? No, not yet. I saw him earlier today. He actually helped. Actually, they were helping to get them. They were back leaf, to leaf blowing and mowing today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did a bunch around here. I can't think of anything for Cemetery and Roads except for that. Um, there's going to be a water feature installation in the in the Prairie Cemetery this week. And if anybody wants to see a picture of it, I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. um, is, is this a, a, a pond or a fountain? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's called, I, it's called a pondless fountain. Or so, no, a pondless. No. That's all I right. It's, 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 it kind of looks like a, a, a limestone or something almost like a glen type thing mm -hmm. and it's got it, we got the double so that I have one little waterfall here and one little waterfall oh, over here and it falls it's circulating it's circulating it's a pump underground but it doesn't have a pond it has like um pebbles so that it no. won't it won't have water which will it in the bright sun out there it would turn to algae immediately mm -hmm. and it would probably attract the ducks and geese next door mm -hmm. so but there are little ledges where there's there's water available for like insects and birds. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the um, Chris has dreamed about a water feature for a long time and the um, nature and habitat people say we have a lot of diversity out there and it will even multiply if there's a, if there's mm -hmm. a water source for insects and birds. Mm -hmm. and so this is something that someone constructs out of uh, random pieces of limestone and install the plumbing or is it some kind of a package that come, it, comes it's, in. It's both. They install it. It's a package. It has, they, they have these things they put together. It's a Cincinnati it's a, it's a Aquatic Center and it, um, okay. I'm just, it, just it has a reservoir. It has a reservoir and pool underground. They'll yeah. be going up there uh, Wednesday if you want to put your nose in there. Oh, that's it. And of course you have to turn it off at this time of year. 
I'll get operating instructions when it's installed. <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe this is a problem with my short-term memory, but did we actually have a motion to appoint? Did we vote on a motion to appoint Danny? Oh, no, you didn't. I'm backing up to the previous. I made the motion. Yeah, you didn't actually vote on it. Okay. I second, and I vote for it. And as well, do I? Tom's on top of it today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It was that unintentional lap just before the meeting. <laughs> Fresh now. Fiscal officer report. So far, finances are looking good for November. Um, that's good. If we're getting to the end of the year and we're not having any massive shifts, that's a good sign. Yeah. We ought to be given the levy would pass, but um, so, but she does have a resolution of amendment of permanent appropriations. Resolution 2023-42. Um, Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. General fund um, increased by 2,000 for cemetery salaries. Fire fund, Social Security increased 3,000. Contracted services, 8,000. EMS billing, contracted services, 4,000. The Miami Township trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately i move adoption of this resolution i second may we vote please mr hollister yes ms moyer yes so let it be done zoning inspector's report um since I saw you last, I have issued four permits, which is kind of, seems kind of busy, but um, the first one was to uh, Gerald Laramore and Stephen Donaldson out on Yellow Springs Fairfield Pike for an accessory structure. He's, he's been acquiring storage containers. Yeah, he's, is getting them permitted. Oh. Um, uh, it, it, there's a small change to a property on Snipe Road. Um, it's enlarging the front porch. Uh, Jamie Sharp on State Route 343 put an accessory storage structure up. And, and I thought this is interesting, the village of Clifton is finally doing their upgrade of their sewage treatment plant. They came to us at the beginning of the pandemic to give permission to do that. So they've, they've had some difficulty um, actually getting going, but they are replacing the, the trailer office structure with a permanent building, and then they will be replacing the aeration chamber which is the primary well it's, it's one of two components of the sewage treatment um, and he said the contractor was saying to me in the nick of time you can you can see holes in it at this point it's rust rusted through anyway so that's that's taking place um, and the although the zoning commission wanted to meet last month they didn't have a quorum so they, they will, October was off as usual, in, in spite of efforts to keep working. And um, just got in the mail today a letter from Agraria Center for Regenerative Practice. They are once again um, moving ahead with an Ohio EPA Class II compost facility. Um, this time around, they're going for, uh, uh, I don't know, an off-the-shelf brand vessel composter capable of handling 500 pounds per day of compostable material, which um, the, the, the compost they will make using that, that machine will be used on the property for 
for their soil enrichment. Um, I explained to them that they can accumulate anything they want to put on their fields, and they can put it on their fields and then compost it first or not compost it, but what they can't do is have a business of selling compost, because that doesn't fall under the state's definition of agriculture. So, do they even need a permit? Well, if they're no, not selling. but they're not actually asking for a permit. They're just telling me that they're oh, doing it okay. in, this, in this letter. Suppose, suppose they, they thought they had a case that compost is a, a manufactured product on a farm that it comes as raw material, much like nitrogen fertilizer comes with raw material and leaves as a finished product. What would, how would they, if they wanted to appeal something like that, how would they, well, the, what would the, they have to do? I, you know, the, there's sort of two rules. One is that, that the state of Ohio gives no authority to townships to regulate agriculture. And B, the state of Ohio defines what agriculture is. So someone has to take the definition of agriculture from the state of Ohio and argue one way or the other. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't fall into any of those lists that I've seen them, you know. Mm -hmm. I go over that list fairly often of things classified as agriculture. But obviously you can purchase all the fertilizer you want. In this case, I'm assuming that will be people will donate material that will then be composted. I, I have no idea how it will work. There, in the past, there have been at least two people that have proposed a service of collecting compost, so they would have their business and taking it out to Agraria. I don't think Agraria was, itself was ever going to do that, but there, that's a separate business. Mm -hmm. um, the, I don't think that there's a business to charge for taking compost, and it's a very, I, I advised them, I said, you don't want to have a drop-off facility because people will drop off stuff everywhere, anywhere, at all times of the day and night. You, you know, you, you, you just don't, it, or that's a very risky way to operate if you don't have a, a fence and a gate and somebody there when you're receiving it. And I think they appreciated that aspect of it. That's just friendly advice. Um, and obviously, if you if, some, if you were charging for the service, you would have to have somebody there. Right? That's that's um, kind of takes away from the whole process. But we'll see. They, I mean, this is something they. It was many years ago, like maybe the first year they were open, that they started getting this class two license and talking to us about it and all. So that's how long this has all been gestating. And it's a, the class two license is somewhat expensive to maintain. You have to have various testing done and, and uh, inspections and, and other things, but it allows you to, to take, you know, it's compost where you're taking, say, uh, plant material is fairly innocuous. When you start taking, food waste, you've got much more potential for, for problems in terms of, of smells or decay or disease or anything else. So they have, they have to follow all those rules because that's what the class two is about, is what they can receive. Okay, thank you. Um, I, we need to have the zoning records updated, so I would, as, as we talked about, we simply need a file on each person you deal with. All right, are we going to do it by person or by address? Last time you said address you know, to me. You know what? I did say address, and I said it, I said it when I met with you for the first time to explain, and at which point you really gave me some rough, I feel, about questioning how I did it and things. And then I, I reiterated that it will be alphabetically by address. Right. That's what I've done for the last couple of permits, but I haven't. Where are they? They're in that drawer. Really? Yeah. Huh. But I have to put, I have to figure out 
how many folders to have and what, what the alphabetical letters are going to be. I put the, you know, I don't know what the address was, but say it was a W and I put it, you know, in the next to the last folder. Are we in the same drawer? Because all, drawer. I, all I see is the big things I put in there. Yeah, there, there's some things you put in the front which aren't zoning permits. Well, I, mean, I want zoning and BZA, let me make that clear. Anything, any person we deal with zoning or BZA, like what happened in 2023? So we can look at all the properties of what happened in 2023. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I missed it. Did, did, okay, you, put, well, did mean, you put the uh, addresses on? Uh, no, I haven't. On the I say, I haven't done that. I just, I, it's, it's still, I can't tell exactly what it is you want because you talked about addresses and then there were these folders in the front that weren't filed by address. Huh. I mean, I don't know. But it's the same drawer. It's all the same drawer. Okay. I can put labels on the folders now that says A, B, C, D through Z. No, right? just and put, the address is you stuff. don't have to put A, B, C through D. You just, like, I, I swear I put one in there for F, 1115 Fairfield Pike. Another for, um, after that was K, Kyle Road. Okay, well I did, I, and you know, like I didn't you said, spot the letters, so I'll go and look again. Maybe I okay. wasn't looking in the right I'll, place. I'll take it up. Um, I, I've got, I have a list here. I don't see, I didn't see anything about the chamber and the whole sunflower thing. I just put a list, just write a brief summary of events. Okay, well see, I didn't understand that it was something other than permits. Okay. And then the house permit, you, you reported two house permits and a swimming pool on the October 2nd meeting. So I just put a list because so it would be yeah. easy. Well, and then you know, the deck. they are right here and I've started, but I haven't made, maybe then, I haven't gotten the habit of making a second copy each time and putting them yeah, in the Yeah, because we, the we have to have, we have to have access to them and yeah. the public has to have access to them. Well, they're, um, they're, they're all there. Are they? Yes, <laughs> in the top drawer. The, I mean, the one, the, the current one. Okay, the bottom drawer is the drawer that you've set up. I'm still, here are the zoning permits from 2023. Yeah. In chronological order, which is the way that they've been kept for the last, since, since zoning started here. Okay, and we're switching now. So I'm making two files so that I still have the advantage what oh, yeah, to make sense keep your own file well, you, keep keep the your own, you, you may keep your own file we just want one manila envelope for each client at their address Whether right, they right, have if easy, it's filed by the client's name or by the address by the address okay by the address i'll write instructions on top okay, of the address. now we have a, okay i think i think with the chamber of commerce see the, the client doesn't go with the address Right. right, we're going by address. Okay, we're going by address. And if this is helpful. Those are the ones I can think of that happened since then. Oh, yeah, to make sure that they're all there. And I would like to, for us to adopt an agritourism permit tonight. And I've worked on it with Jen Huber, and I'd like to avoid the process that we, we went through with the Patrons, where it seems to me that after all, because of the informal nature of the process, the agriculture permit, which this isn't the final copy, this is, it's almost final. I, well, uh, I have not seen any of this. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you, oh yeah, you, right, we'll have, we might have to put this off till next week. It's like, in my mind, we should have an agritourism permit that gives all the essential information and all the things that you ask the patrons for, which we can regulate, which is... Um, it's what's in the code. What's in the code, the driveways, the parking, the ingress, the ingress, the That's all and, that I need. And that's all. I don't need anything else. Do you not need their name and everything? And well, all yes, stuff? the name and address. And okay. do, is it not appropriate to have an applicant's statement why do, do do the parcels of land for which the applicant is seeking agritourism permit meet the definition of a farm as described in ORC 901.8? The definition of agriculture production is described in 929.01. That might also be useful. That question, and also list each agritourism activity proposed and state why you believe that they fit the definition of agriculture. Those are not pertinent questions? No, all right. The, the 
Because they, were, they originally they were denied because they because the information that they provided to me didn't indicate that their farm was productive. They gave no information that it was a productive farm, except telling me to go to the auditor and look at their their forest yes. management plan, and which because, I did. Because we didn't have a permit that asked them to do that. I asked them for it. Right, right. So. No, it, it, this this was a this was a something new. Okay, we've only this is only the second application for agritourism that we've had. Clementine. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. We had that way back in the beginning. Clementine. Yeah. Agraria. You know what? Agraria. I can remember. I can remember a, a letter that they wrote to you. Well, and you said, well, you have to ask for a permit. And, and, and Alex copied me and said, well, what do you mean by permit? And it was fuzzy. And she said, can you can you send me an example of a permit? No, that no. Alex is way after that. That was being handled by. Um, you had a conversation with Alex because she copied me on okay, it. Okay, that was after the original agritourism hearing that we had with them. Right, we were it was. talking about additional agritourism activities. Right, and my point is that she asked, is, is there a process? And there was none. So in my mind, this solves it. You're okay. thinking of agritourism things. Make your case, who you are, all your details. Make your case yeah. that you're a working farm and make your case that this falls under yeah. agritourism. And then, Richard, everything can be addressed at once. I feel like with the Patron case, they made it, uh, you asked them for a, a, um, an email explaining what they want to do, or they gave no, you an email. No, they, they sent a, me they a sent letter saying about this is on our do. application for agritourism. And then your response to them was, I don't believe you're a productive farm. Right. And they said, what about, it? and then your question was, I, you said, I didn't read the rest because. Because if it's not a productive it, farm, yeah, we don't right. have and to that, make that to decision. Me, that, that, and, then, and then it goes, and then they want to appeal, but they can't because you haven't answered that part. And then you let them appeal on the basis of a productive farm, but we haven't discussed this because you didn't read it. This, I think, takes care of all that. This, this okay, is, I'm not arguing with this what you have. So this is your copy. This, it's kind of sloppy. Our, 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 um, it's not sloppy at all. It's really nice. I'll get you a copy, too. Our um, website person will make it look better, and it will go. It'll be available on the website for people to return to you. And I, I always just put fee $100, because I don't know what, and I, I don't. Well, you you all set, set, set those the fee. rates, and I, so ignore that because I don't know what it, I haven't thought about rates. I just put a hundred because it's a nice round number. It's yeah, probably well, too expensive. So it's we certainly don't have the same expenses normally involved with a, with issuing a permit. Okay, right. the if 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 issuing an agritourism permit requires more time and energy mm -hmm. than a regular building permit, then, then a different fee would be appropriate. Agritourism, it depends on what you're doing. You know, our current permit fees are based on a flat fee of $10 and a percentage of the cost of what it is that you're usually building, because almost all of our permits are for construction of something. In the case of agritourism, um, for example, at, at Agraria, they were not building anything. Right. All right. The patrons are proposing building something. Okay. And so, so we'll set the fee. That's um, fine. Yeah. Um, before we get off of this, um, also on the website now, prematurely, and thank God nobody's wanted a BZA because it was just up there as a kind of a test. Um, we added a temporary use application and you had argued that we shouldn't have an application because it's not a, not a permitted use. I checked it out with our attorney. She thought it was a really good idea to have a temporary use exception. She asked me what to include on that. Um, we, everybody used to say that, oh, Larry's the only one who's ever applied for it. So we've had two more now. We had one with um, yeah, we've had Fairfield and we have temporary the use with the Chamber of Commerce. So, we should probably not run. In. I know the one on Fairfield was a real sketchy and and um, a, a, a citizen. Actually, the one on Fairfield was very specific. 
Well, it was a. Matter of fact, so was and so was the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, but is it written anywhere? And is it is it is it just like? Well, no. We have, no. It wasn't. It wasn't straightforward. There's an email. He said this. She said that. This is what okay. we asked for. Well, that was um, the problem with with the owner not doing the application. And so this just asks them right off the bat: Who are you? And who owns the land? And yeah. are you the owner? Are you the agent? Are you the lessee? Are you the optionee? Here's here's an example of. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Okay. So, uh, and, and so this is another. This is temporary use because so that's. Another, I would like to see copies yeah, of these. Okay. Yeah. The, um, the difficulty. And, and I don't sorry. have any problems with gathering any amount of information. The question is: is what information does the BZA need to make their decision? And I think I did a pretty careful job of it, and I did it, but in. in um, I um, aligned it with our resolution. Our resolution doesn't ask for anything. For temporary use? Yeah. Um, these are the things I asked for. Describe your activity, really based on a lot of what I've seen going back and forth in emails. Describe your activities. Describe the dates, number two, the dates and duration of your activity. Number of attendants, attendees, is it ticketed? Is it public or private? Parking accommodations, okay. including ingress and egress, lighting and signage, any temporary structures. Will food be served? It will be provided by the host or a food truck or catered. The handling of trash and waste removal, restroom availability, security or emergency medical services, and any discussions or any discussions or concern, concerns or support from neighbors about the event. So I think from everything I've gathered, we covered it pretty thoroughly. And um, I don't know what, for example, the chamber's going to do next year. Are they going to ask for an agritourism permit? Are they going to ask for another temporary use? But um, just so we have all the information up front, what, what concerns me about the Patron situation is because of how it evolved, nine months later, we're just now asking for the most basic of information that we regulate. Like the, the most basic things that you said that we that we okay until until we had the hearing with the BZA there wasn't anything for them to apply for until it was determined that they could have agritourism all right i suppose you could have a whole cascade of things if we get permission to do this then can we do this and if yeah. we can do this can we do this and but but so basically, we're at the point now where I need the information to see that they meet the requirements in the code. The BZA doesn't determine that. The BZA doesn't write code. Right. So they determined that A, it was a productive farm. Okay? And, and, and that the activities that they proposed that evening met the definition of agritourism. And then there was some question. And, and what I'm saying is that it could have all been in this three-page, four-page application, the whole ball of wax all at once, instead of, but that's OK. You, you get the point. Um, and then there's questions about, uh, have you worked it out with her as far as? Um, I have not heard back from her since I answered her her letter when I so when I got it. and that's another thing she has to start all over with 4083 the second um, no parcel. she doesn't have to start all over she has to now she has to give the information to see if they've got the appropriate setbacks and the, and the appropriate ingress and egress and, and and the things that we the code our code says we need to regulate that's all Okay, so can I get copies of these? I can. You can. I could give these to if you want to look them over, Richard. You can. If not, I'll just. Well, I'm happy to look. Um, them over. Send any. Um, send any. I mean, I'm not sure if there's. You know what? Uh, send any um, suggestions you have. If, if I'm just, it's a courtesy if you want to by the end of the week. And Don, I have them digitally. Do you want them in paper? I do. 
But I can send them. Just email them. Okay. Um, the other thing I have is, um, you know, we've been planning a long time for city to take over the, the coordination of the BZA um, hearings and scheduling and applications. <clears throat> If you visit the website, it's up there prematurely again, and I'm just crossing my fingers nobody needs to use it because it's not ready to fly yet. Um, but it's all, there's a very good explanation of the different types of hearings, and there's an application for each one. You guys can look them over. I've given you, I've asked you and Chris too, and I think I asked you, but I'm not sure you, you received it. No, I haven't received it. Um, which is a whole other issue, but... Um, I, mean, I, was, I was reviewing, there are seven different kinds of hearings. The yeah. BZA, yeah. Okay, carry Right, on. and we're starting with threes, because... There's a three... Two of them don't coming. require public hearings, so that, that takes it down and, and, to, and, and, to five. And there's three there, and there's, one, there's four on there now, so that's... I'm missing one, so I'm probably missing similar use. Is the one I'm well, the missing. similar use and boundaries are the two that don't require public hearings. Okay. Okay. There's there's administrative review. There's grievance appeal. There's conditional use. There's variance, and there's temporary use. I got them. They're all there. Well, that's five. You just told me there were four. So I've got variance, conditional use, the um, uh, administrative appeal and temporary use. Okay, there's one more kind of appeal, and I, I'm characterizing it as a grievance appeal. Oh. It's, it's, it's oh. weird. Okay, grievance. It's sort of stuck in there. Okay, I'll take a look. It's um, right after variances. So I talked to, Cynthia is handling family issues now and can't take this on, but I'm eager to get that off your plate, because we had agreed that you were going to simplify your job and to just be the, the, the permit aspect. And um, I had a conversation with Richard Silliman, and um, he's agreed to be the interim BZA coordinator, um, which is, you know, traditionally is a job of the chair to, to um, set up the meeting times, to, to receive the application, set up the meeting times, communicate with you as needed, um, book the room, etc. cetera. And um, he's agreed that he could do that for the interim while Cynthia is handling her family stuff. And I don't know if we need a motion to, we've already, we've already agreed that we could to offer that position. And since the person we're offering it to can't do it right now. Um, is there compensation for this? That's internal, okay. Yeah, that's, that's just internal. Okay, thank you. No, that's a public. Do you have any comments on any of this? No. Okay. Um, new business. I mean, anything else for zoning? Do you have, anybody have any other concerns for zoning? Oh, um, Chris brought up, yeah. <laughs> you might have seen there's a, there's a tiny house going up somewhere. I forget what he said. And um, that may open a whole... I don't know. Was it open ended? It doesn't, doesn't cause any problem at all. It's not legal. I mean, either it's a house on a foundation built on a lot that meets our requirements, or you don't have it. It doesn't size is not something we regulate. We have no regulation on size of all. So as it sits there, I guess maybe we should But someone it's a trailer okay. if it just rolled in and is sitting someplace. Okay. And that's not allowed. You mean? Okay. So it's not allowed. That's good. I mean, or not good, but it just is. So it's there. It says. No. I mean, we require that you have a septic system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. For example, and then we require that you have a lot that's the appropriate size. Now this I don't, I don't know anything yeah. about the particular yeah. instance we, we, that we're we, talking about. Okay. So we'll, I'm sure that we'll, we'll be hearing possibly more as people attend tiny homes. Well, I've had quite a number of people talk to me about tiny homes and I explained the, the situation. But it isn't the tiny, it's not the issue. Okay. 
Did uh, we? I have no new business. I have no old business. Yeah, we handle our new business under um, Scott Oster Home. Oh, this, let me back up just a second. Our code, I don't think, spells out exactly how you build a house. Okay? But we use the Green County building regulation mm -hmm. as our agent, and they have minimum standards for a house. Okay? Okay. I'll report that back to Chris. He asked me to bring that up. Um, oh, I have a, <clears throat> just a little bit of old business. Um, I, I received the lease agreement from, I'll give this to you, Don, to review. It's a lease agreement from any any <clears throat> NE broadband company, the ones that are occupied. Ah, uh, yes. From, the, the former, the broadband company that operates one of their little stations in the Quonset Hut. And um, they would like us to review that and add, if there's anything we'd like to add, and they also want to give us a copy of their $2 million worth of insurance, and um, well, I'll, I'll talk to you later about it. Yeah, I should, I should uh, <clears throat> pay more attention to this than I can in the next 30 seconds. Yes, absolutely, no, no, no rush. Um, and, Gosh, it feels like we're forgetting something. Oh, um, we need to have an executive session by Chris's request and, and Denny's request um, for the purposes of employee evaluation, let's say. I am returning from executive session, as, as is my colleague Don Hollister, and um, we will take no, we will ha take no action as a result. And I entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Let's adjourn. By acclamation.